Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let God be true. Amen. When God created you, he created a winner. And today we will be talking about how to have a winning attitude. A winning attitude. That is right. You were made to win. It is just like that. And so let's give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Thank God. Thank you, Lord, to be that you will be with this program and that you will strengthen and encourage people today. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen and Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Let's get right into it, okay? You were made to be a winner. In fact, the Bible says that you are more than a conqueror. God made you to be a conqueror. And I know I've got this little sign here uh, uh, next to me. If you look there, uh, winners never quit. And the fact that God has confidence in you. He created you to rule, to reign. God created you uh, to be a conqueror. He created you to bring everything that you desire back in subjection to him. And that's the key, how to be in charge. If you want to be in charge of the things that you do, God will give you the freedom to be in charge if you are faithful by applying his principles. So let's look at a few things today. You are a winner. It doesn't matter how you feel. It does not matter uh, what you think. In God's eyes, you are an overcomer. That's what the Bible says. You are an overcomer. You've been given all this power to rule and reign. And we're going to get into a few specifics. And then I'm going to tell you a story about a man who became very wealthy. And what was his secret? Okay. Now, when you have an attitude of, I'm going to be a winner and not a quitter. There's something that will fuel your uh, expectation. And that is called simply hope. You see, encouragement is the fuel on which hope runs. I'm going to say that again. Encouragement is uh, the fuel on which hope runs. You've got to encourage yourself constantly by having a good circle of people around you. You've got to encourage yourself through the Word of God. You've got to encourage yourself through your desire. You see, because you were born to win. I'm looking in a uh, uh, zigzag. You know that he was a very strong uh, believer as well and very motivational and uh, you were born to win he says but to be the winner you were born to be you have to plan to win you've got a plan to win and uh, once you have planned to win you've got to have an expectation to win there was a man in the Bible, and he was just not a happy, clappy chappy. But his desire was to move with the blessing of God on his life. You know the story about Jacob. He had ups and downs and downs and ups. And then he went to work for Uncle Laban. But then one day he decided, hang on, 
I want to do something for my household. I want to do something for my life. Perhaps you might be that person that God might be talking to today. That perhaps you at the crossroads where you've said in your heart, hang on, I want to do something for my life. I don't want to be reminded that, uh, you know, of my mistakes and failures. Listen, we all have made mistakes. I'm number one on the list. But in order to win, you've got to win yourself over. I'm going to say that again. In order to win, you've got to win yourself over. You've got to win your own attitude over. And the only way to win your own attitude over is to become transformed by the renewing of your mind. But this gentleman in the Bible, Brother Jacob, he went to his boss the one day and he said to his boss, listen, I want to do something for my household and uh, uh, from now on as I'm taking care of your flock, I'm taking care of your produce, I want all the spotted animals to be my wages. Jacob had a desire that's key. You've got to have a desire. Then Jacob visualized his future success. Very important. And then once Jacob visualized his future success, he spoke, he spoke his success by telling somebody, this is what I am going to do. And then Uncle Laban, then Genesis chapter 30, I'm just looking, Genesis 3, 0. 3, 0, okay? And verse 37. Now Jacob then went and he made a pitcher of faith. He made a pitcher of faith. That is criteria. That uh, you make a pitcher of faith, Okay? When you have a picture of faith, you will have something to look at that will constantly remind you of where you want to go. Very, very important. You see all these people here behind me, different people. You need people in your life that will help you. If you are a farmer, you're going to need uh, shopping malls or vegetable distributors, or you're going to uh, need a, uh, a dairy, like we would say, uh, that will take all the produce of the cows, the milk, and, you know, pasteurize it and sterilize it. You need a company that will take your uh, the milk of your cows to bottle it and, and, and so on and so on and so on. The point I'm making is whatever God blesses you with is for others to benefit. Therefore, he connects you with people. He connects you with people. And they do not have to be a Christian. They don't have to be a Christian. Now, I can just hear when somebody uh, is going to listen to this broadcast, maybe not today, but, uh, you know, in time, that you may say, but you mean I don't need a Christian? Listen, we all need Christians, but we also need 
to be of influence to those that are not a Christian because then we become God's testimony. Jacob, for instance, goes into Egypt where Joseph is now in charge, second in charge, and the first thing Jacob, the daddy, does, he blesses a wicked king. Oh, if we only realize the power of a blessing, when you begin to bless your job and bless your boss and bless the company, God has opportunity to work on your behalf and within that company. All right, back to Jacob. So Jacob, he's, uh, he's at a point in his life, he's been striving so much with, with different things, and, and, uh, but now he wants to do something for his household. In Genesis chapter 30, the Bible says he explained the picture of his vision towards his future to Uncle Laban. He says, I want all the spotted animals to be my wages. And my righteousness, that means my right standing with God, will testify of my sincerity and honesty in this whole process. Then Jacob went and he made a picture of faith. You see, winners always have a picture of faith. If you want to be a winner in life, your picture of faith is an expression of your inward desire. I'm going to say this again. Your picture of faith is an expression of your inward desire. As you delight in God, He will grant you your desires. But you need a picture. Jesus had a constant picture. Think about that. He will remind the people, say, or His disciples especially, uh, I will be betrayed, I will be flogged, I will be killed, but after three days I will rise again. He had a constant picture of I will rise again. And that should be your picture and my picture. I will rise again no matter what I go through. I will rise again. That is a champion's attitude. I will rise again. So Jacob, he makes a picture of faith towards his future. Spotted picture. Because remember he said to his boss, Uncle Laban, from now on all the spotted animals will be my wages. And so Jacob peeled the bark of the tree and he made a spotted picture of faith. Because Jacob had a winner's attitude inside of his mind. And a winner's attitude, remember, a winner's have a mentality of, I will never quit. And quitters cannot be winners. And a winner is not a quitter. And quitters cannot be winners. <laughs> okay? So Jacob... He makes this spotted picture, and I'm just reading here in Genesis 30, 30 verse 38. And then he took the rod which he had peeled, and he set it before the flocks in the, in the, you know, in the uh, water troughs uh, where they, the flocks came to drink, so that they should conceive when they came to drink. You must have intimacy with that vision. Intimacy. This way and this way. You bring God into your picture of faith. You bring God into your expectation. You bring God into that faith picture. You need a faith picture. Now, uh, when you have that picture of faith and that expectation, you need to plan towards it. You need to prepare yourself uh, with an expectation to win. You've got to prepare your mind. You've got to prepare your attitude. You've got to prepare your uh, uh, desire to become a reality because as you think you become, as you think you become, 
And then you've got a plan. You've got a plan to win, beloved. Like Jacob, he planned to win. For instance, you want to go, uh, let's say you want to go on a trip, on a, you know, uh, uh, vacation. And uh, what do you do? You check, is my budget going to meet it? Do I have enough? Yeah, okay. Uh, where do I want to go? Let's say Florida, since the beaches, everybody is well known with that. Um, okay, yep. Yeah. Where uh, do, am I going to travel by car? Do I have enough gas money there and back and making a little provision if something breaks down? When I stay there, do I have accommodation? You plan your trip and then you begin to visualize and you expect how you're going to relax walking by that sea, enjoying the sea. and. Uh, what did I see? I saw the sea. Okay. <laughs> uh, that reminds me of the Navy where I used to be joining the Navy uh, to see the world. What did I see? I saw the sea. <laughs> and uh, so you uh, begin to visualize and you plan. Now you get into that vehicle. You get into that situation that will get you where you need to be going. Are you catching what I'm saying? You now have to get into the uh, operation of that which will give you future success. So in this case, you've got to get into your vehicle that will take you towards your journey, your destination. It's a traveling and a GPS that gives you different directions where to turn, where not to turn, when to slow down, when, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, I want to begin to uh, close. So planning has to be based on getting a clear vision. Jesus planned. He said to his disciples, go into town. There's a man with a bucket. Follow him. And then say to the owner of the house, the teacher needs the uh, room, uh, upper room to prepare, to prepare, go prepare a place to have my last supper. Jesus prepared. Okay. Now, having said all that, I want to encourage you today and say uh, your desire is a motivational factor in your life. What is your real desire? What is your real desire? Look at your life, where you at, where you would like to be in accomplishing more results. Because God made you and I to accomplish more results. The Bible says we grow from faith to faith. Come on now. We excel in love. We excel in grace. We go from glory to glory. All these principles really are in the Bible. And so you've got to have that uh, heart, desire, attitude, like I'm going to grow. I'm going to press on towards a higher mark of fulfill uh, fulfillment. I'm a winner. I'm not a quitter. Amen. Because quitters cannot win. Now, your desire, your desire is a strong, motivational, encouraging a factor in your life. Because your desire will feel, it's like your your, your, the gas for your tank, you know, in your vehicle, your desire is like that gas. It will get you to move towards that which you uh, are desiring in your life. Remember, preparation, you've got to prepare. In this media uh, studio here that I have uh, yesterday and uh, uh, 
during the last few days, let me just do, do it like that. It, it, in order to move to another level, I've got to rearrange my space, um, get different shelves, sort myself out with regards to planning, uh, have a section that this is what I will be talking on and grouping uh, all my material and uh, the knowledge that I extract through my studies, group things together on that side, and then on the other side, group things together. But I had to go and get wood and shelves and put it together and reorganize my desk. That is right. Uh, if you want to move to another level, change is inevitable. You're going to have to change some things around. You have to change some things around. And you have to prepare yourself. You've got to equip yourself to win. You've got to have knowledge. You've got to go to Google if you don't have any other resources or buy a book. That's right. Invest in yourself. Because we... God made us with such a creativeness. You have a creative ability. Because you've got the creator on the inside of you. Okay, let me, let me close. So equipping and preparing yourself to win requires an attitude of I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. I will not talk down to myself because God created me in his image and likeness and I will con constantly set my bar or a little bit higher. I will have some goals and I'll invest most of my time into those things that matters to me most. Let me close with this. Okay, and again, I want to say is that your desire is going to be your motivation because your desire is w what will take you where you want to go. Jacob had a desire. I want to do something for my household. And then he made a picture of faith. Place your little picture of faith on your refrigerator. You know that refriger refrigerator, <laughs> that door keeps opening when you're around. Or me. I know. I love the refrigerator. Always looking for something in there. Well, Jacob, the Bible says in Genesis uh, chapter 30, it says there in verse 43, for thus the man became exceeding prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. He became prosperous. That's what God wants for you and I. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And I trust you benefited through this. And please remember that uh, you can go uh, to uh, my, uh, if you would like to sow a seed, make it out your check to AIM, as you can see there, and help us here to continuously upgrade. And... Uh, you know, sometimes I've got, to, I've got to get cables, I've got to get this, switch this over, and get a, another microphone. There's always something. Upgrade the program. And today we have a powerful interview as well uh, at 10 a.m. with a man from Ohio. So don't forget to watch that. So you can sow a seed, uh, make your check out to AIM. The address is there. And you know that your seed will become well watered.
Amen. All right. I'm just looking there and see something here. All right. Praise the Lord. Somebody give God some praise. Amen. Until next time, remember that Jesus is Lord and you're a winner and not a quitter. Bye now.